Marine Corps Aviation actually began in, in 1912 when our first aviator, Alfred A. Cunningham, was ordered to flight school and became Naval Aviator Number 5, Marine Corps Aviator Number 1. Marine Aviation struggled uh, until World War I. By the time World War I ended, we were a fairly effective uh, fighting force. So we came back to the United States and participated in the Banana Wars, but uh, we didn't become a significant force until World War II when uh, we uh, fought in the Pacific and fought valiantly and, uh, and heroically as a very integral part of the Marine Air Ground Task Force. MAGTAF is a, it's a great concept that the Marine Corps has. It's uh, four elements. You've got a uh, command element, uh, the ACE, the aviation combat element, a ground combat element, and then a logistics support element. Uh, and you put these together uh, based on the mission, and that's really a unique concept within the Marine Corps. The beauty of the MAGTAF is that you could bring MEF level uh, size to special purpose MAGTAF uh, down to a company or even smaller size conceivably. Within it, uh, in the air side, we're very uh, uh, proud of the fact that the, the Jewel, the A, and the MAGTAF is aviation and uh, we bring specifically uh, V-22 and uh, what had been the CH-46 is medium lift assault support. Uh, absolutely fundamental to a Joint Force Commander, a Special Task Force Commander to have the ability to move things around the battle space uh, via air. The 46 was ideally uh, suited for platoon size elements. Uh, the Marine Corps is all about squad size operations, you know, nine plus guys operating as a integral specialized unit and we move that size element around the battlefield. So that was perfect for quick reaction forces, for resupply missions, for uh, Kazavac and Medivac and be able to evacuate several Marines at a time. And the uh, 46 was extremely uh, versatile in terms of where it could land and how it could land. And by far with over 300 some helicopters, we was seeing the, the bulk of the assault support missions in uh, Vietnam, in the Caribbean, in the Mediterranean during, during the 60s and 70s. Um, and it was a fantastic aircraft uh, for, for its role. But, uh, like I said, it was developed in the 50s with 1950s technology, uh, and we're, we're a little bit farther ahead of that now. The MV-22 Osprey is really kind of a revolutionary airplane within the Marine Corps. Conceptually, it's been 30 or 40 years kind of in the making. I think the reality is in the 90s, the airplane started to take shape of what we see today. V-22 doesn't look like a helicopter, it looks more like a C-130 when it's in aircraft mode. The V-22 is smaller helicopter blades, so the composite materials and the alloys involved in the engineering are amazing. The rotors are supremely designed for the high loads required that a larger helicopter blade is able to generate a lot of lift. And it, it just blows your mind when you, when you get in, in a conversation with engineers about uh, the disc loading and the, and the amount of pressures uh, and weights involved on, in the engineering of V-22s. I think your efficiencies are speed and range in this airplane um, and then the altitudes that you can fly and you can climb above the threat. What used to probably be a full day's worth of work, you know, a six or seven hour fly day for CH-46 Echoes to fly around, you can probably have done what they did in six hours and about an hour and a half, two hours with the V-22. So now you, if you couple that, say it took two hours, now you, you're doing three times the lifting in the same period that those helicopters are doing. So that's really the efficiency right there. The reason we have a Marine Corps is for offensive ops. Uh, America's enemies, America's uh, uh, detractors know when Marines show up, it's game time. Uh, it's for real. We're not the Army, we're not the National Guard. When Marines come, it means there's, there's going to be uh, potential for violence. And, uh, and one of the beauty of uh, the V-22 uh, ranges is that I can do that without you ever seeing me coming. Uh, helicopter traditionally 75 nautical miles uh, means the ships would have to get pretty close. I don't have to be that close. I could do it 250 nautical miles away. You'll never see me coming. Uh, I could go deep into your interior lines and uh, make make it very very uh, complicated for your uh, for your life. And uh, the Osprey 
uh, is perfect for that mission. 